Planning Commission meeting for December 5th, 2017. For those that have not had the yeah. pleasure, uh, the way things work is first of all, we turn off our cell phones so we don't get uh, annoyed during the meeting. Second of all, after we do the roll call and approval of the minutes from the last meeting is we take the items one at a time, city staff presents on an item, and then initially it's open just to the commission for technical questions. Once the technical questions are done, we hand it off to the public. If you have something to say, we ask that you step up to the microphone and state your name and address so we have them for the records, and please try to keep your uh, comments on topic if you can. After public has had their opportunity to comment, we bring it back to the commission for discussion and a vote, and then we just move on to the next item. With that, let's call the roll. David Borsak. Present. Ed Bowen. Jeffrey Tomes. Here. Thomas Foytek. Here. John Hintz. Here. Steve Cummings. Kathleen Propp. John Kiefer. Robert Feigert. Here. Michael Ford. All right, moving on to the approval of the minutes uh, from last time. I do have one correction. My name is on there is calling the meeting to order, and I was not there, so I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. <laughs> no, it wasn't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is there any, any other corrections, additions, deletions? Look like you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to move that we keep Chairman Foytek in the minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Saying no. All right, let's move on to item number one. Okay. Item number one. Oh. Well, Petitioners requesting release of an easement at 1319 Bayshore Drive. So here's the subject site. It is located near the corner of Bayshore Drive and Lake Street. Uh, it is a residential property. Easement in question. The main question is in orange there. It is uh, in a section of vacated right-of-way along the east property line. Um, as it is vacated right-of-way, the easement is no longer necessary or needed, and the petitioner is planning on building an addition off the east side of the house that will extend into that uh, easement area, um, which is why they'd like to have that easement vacated. Uh, staff does not have any concerns with the release of the easement, as the city no longer has a need for the easement rights. Um, as as the right of way has been vacated, and the Department of Public Works will work with the property owners to have appropriate easement documents uh, prepared, signed, and recorded with the Winnebago County Register of Deeds. And here's the easement document. And you can see the proposed addition will extend into that easement area. And staff recommends approval of the release of the easement as requested. All right, technical questions? Seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Okay, back to the commission. Motion to approve. Okay. Any questions, discussion on the motion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Great, great minds. Rob? Aye. Feigert? Aye. Borsak? Uh, abstain. Bowen? Aye. Jones? Aye. Gins? Aye. Boytek? Aye. Motion carried 6-0. One. All right, Sorry. moving on to item number two, accept storm sewer easement at 1601 Bowen Street in Nofke Lumber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, the city is requesting the acceptance of a storm sewer easement on the south side of East Murdoch Avenue. Uh, the proposed easement is located on property owned by Nofke Lumber. It's a 48-foot strip of land that leads south to Nofke's um, store, outdoor storage area. Uh, the reason for the uh, storm sewer request or the easement request is, uh, as you're aware, Murdoch, East Murdoch Avenue has been under construction for the last several months, and Canadian National required the city to redesign their storm sewer that was uh, located under the tracks. So when the city redesigned the storm sewer system, they were unable to place it entirely within the public right-of-way and needed to put some or uh, a place, place a portion of it on uh, Nofke's uh, property. And the image on the screen shows where the proposed easement is and how that storm sewer is going to run. Uh, the city's already been in contact with uh, representatives from Nofsky Lumber and have already signed um, the proposed easement agreement. Um, the easement will be, uh, be then recorded at the Winnebago County Register of Deeds pending Common Council approval. So we are recommending approval of, of the storm sewer easement as proposed. All right, technical questions? Okay, anybody here from the public to speak to this item today? All right, back to the commission. Motion to approve. 
Okay. Second. Any discussion? Okay, call the roll. Prop. Aye. Bygert. Aye. Borsak. Aye. Bowen. Aye. Jones. Aye. Gins. Aye. Forte. Aye. <clears throat> Motion carried 7 0. Okay, moving on to item number three access control variance to allow increased number of driveway approaches, reduced spacing of driveways, and reduced lateral clearance at 405 Washington Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Here is the subject site. It is located at the corner of Washington Ave and Broad Street. Um, it consists of several parcels that will be combined um, to renovate the Eagles Club site. Um, the proposed project consists of existing building renovations as well as construction of new parking areas. So here's the site plan. Um, the proposed parking area will have accesses fr one from Washington Avenue and two from Broad Street. And the municipal code allows for a maximum, maximum of uh, one uh, driveway for the site. Uh, staff is supportive of, the, of this variance request as the site has three separate parking areas and the three uh, driveways are necessary for vehicle circulation through the site. Uh, the southernmost driveway access along Broad Street um, will be separated from the neighboring driveway to the south uh, by about uh, 30 feet. And the driveway fronting Washington Avenue will be separated from the uh, existing driveway to the west by about 25 feet. And municipal code requires a 105 foot separation between driveways. Uh, staff does not have concerns with the proposed spacing reduction as the parking lot is expected to experience relatively low traffic counts, so the reduced spacing should not cause traffic concerns. Uh, the proposed lateral clearance for the driveway along Washington Avenue is about uh, 12 feet, and then the parking area along uh, Broad Street has a lateral clearance of about 17 feet and municipal code requires a 75 foot lateral clearance. Uh, staff does not see the requested reduction as a major issue as most commercial properties in the immediate vicinity have non-conforming lateral clearances and the proposed lateral clearances will be consistent with other, with other commercial sites in the surrounding area. Uh, the Department of Public Works has reviewed the proposal and does not have any concerns. However, they did note that the aprons can be increased to allow for better turning movements and that can be addressed at the site plan review process. And staff rec recommends approval of the access control variances for a third driveway approach, reduced spa driveway spacing, and reduced lateral clearance as proposed. All right, thank you. Technical questions. Jeffrey. How many um, parking spaces are they proposing? And how many do they need? I believe they're meeting the requirement for parking spaces because that's addressed at site plan review. Um, well, the reason I ask, if they have more than they need, I'm mm -hmm. wondering why then are we approving these lateral clearances that are so dr dramatically different than what our ordinance says. I don't remember too many where we're, where, where we're addressing them. You know, we're closing them down so much. I mean, so I, I, I want to know that because if they don't need that many parking spaces, it, it could allow more lateral clearance uh, to be a little bit more away from the street. The other one is down on whatever corner it is, the bottom left-hand corner. Is that a drive aisle that can be navigated through so that there is flow around the, 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 the area to where they don't need two entrances? So to answer your first question, they're actually short on-site parking. Our code allows a provision for additional parking within, um, I'm not gonna quote the right distance here, within a certain distance, they own a lot across the street that has the remainder of their parking requirement, so they don't have an excess number on this site to the proposed use. All right, and then the other one is, you know, we've given several sites a lot of grief because of the parking being so close to the next entrance next to it. I think we did that on um, the one on 9th Street there um, with the dental place and the uh, you know, eye exam place, and we made them use a shared driving. So I, I would be a little bit concerned. Did 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 this go here? through? Yeah, on both sides, you're you're, you're what 25 and 30 feet away from the so next this drive. We do not need an access control branch for. Um, just discuss it with Steve. Being a local street, they don't need it. Um, but furthermore, there's a significant grade change here. So there's actually a retaining wall running along this property line. I'm not sites. concerned about that. I'm concerned about the traffic coming in and out of there. Did 
did uh, traffic review look at this? I mean, 25 feet and 30 feet between egress and ingress areas is pretty close. So, so they actually don't need a variance for that between these two drives. Correct me, correct, Steve. Yeah, this this meets code. I thought they had to be X amount of feet apart oh, away. Didn't you just say that? Yeah, yeah. it's a local street. The local street. street. That, that's a requirement for collectors and arterials. On a local street, there is not a separation requirement. Broad is a local. Washington is a a collector, I believe. Um, so that uh, that would only apply on Washington Avenue for the separation. Uh, additionally, Washington is an en entrance only. There is no exiting volume out of that. <clears throat> All right. That's cleared up a little. It's listed there, but just talking to Steve, it, it is they don't they don't actually need it along well, broad. Then why does it say the ac an access control variance is required as 105 foot of separation yeah. is required? Yeah. And it was reviewed. As, it was it accidentally looked at as a collector. It is not a collector. It's a local street, so we don't need it. All right. So that statement's wrong. Correct. So it is not needed. Any other technical questions? Okay, seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? All right, back to the commission. Approve. <coughs> motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the motion? David. Um, do we do we just correct that? Um, no, it's in the analysis. Where it's not necessary, will we? I'm, I'm approving the recommendation, recommendations on the conditions here. The recommendation for the condition is that we grant an access control variance. Right. They don't appear to need. Which, which they do not need, need yeah. so right. it could be removed from the, the condition. So is that fine? On, 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 on Broad Street, only reduce space yeah. in Washington. Yep. If, if you approve the action, you're approving it, what you're required to, what you're required to uh, grant the variance for the other one, extraneous, uh, it, it's not needed, so. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Follow the roll, please. Crop. Aye. Bikert. Aye. Gorsuch. Aye. Bowen. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Ince. Aye. Boytek. Aye. Motion carried 7 0. Moving on to item number four residential design standards variance to allow window area reduction at the residence at 400 Dakota Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, sir. So for this one, the applicant is requesting a design standards variance to allow window area size reduction <coughs> for a screen porch at 400 Dakota Street. The subject site in blue here is zoned SR9 single family residential. All the properties immediately around the site are SR9 single family residential. There are a few interspersed single family, or I mean two family I should say, excuse me, two family sites around this area, but most of the area around the subject site is SR9. Um, the comprehensive land use recommendation is residential for 10 year and residential for 20 year. So they're coming to us asking for a variance because the ordinance prohibits size reduction of window openings on the front and first 20 feet of the side facades. Um, property was built in 1949 according to the assessor webpage. Um, went over the zoning a little bit. So we'll get into this is a drawing here of what they're looking to do um, in plan. So the side, the south facade is to the right where the red dot is. Right here to the south. This is the west here. There's some steps that go up to the porch here with 32 inch screen door. And then the house is over on this side here. So what they want to do is they want to do a 36 inch knee wall. So you can kind of see the existing porch right now. Um, it's kind of decayed. They want to do a 36 inch knee wall around the base here. And they want to remove these screens here and they want to do storm windows in place of the screens. They say that this will enhance the appearance of the porch. It will also help buttress the structure a little bit better. Um, they'll add some wood structure in there in addition to the current um, support structure here. They intend to replace the roof with a compatible material and um, <coughs> do vinyl siding for the knee wall. Um, that's kind of a little bit of the, the color there um, of what they're proposing. 
And I'm trying to, I guess we don't have another image of the knee wall, but it'd be a 36 inch knee wall with I think 55 inch storm windows above the knee wall. Um, they think it'll enhance the appearance of the block and of the house. It'll help because the structure is in decaying condition right now, so they wanna really replace that replace the screens that they say they cannot directly replace right now. Um, so staff looked at this and evaluated it. The 36 inch knee wall with the 55 inch storm windows to go on top of that knee wall. And we felt that we would recommend approval of this with the condition that the window and window trim, I should say trim there, um, would match the color and appearance of the existing windows on the home. <coughs> The finding was that the variance will not be contrary to the public interest because the size reduction of the openings will not adversely affect the structure's architectural design, the neighborhood character, or curb appearance of the block. And I don't know if it's clear, but I guess I wish we had a better image here. Um, but the idea is they would have <coughs> this thing, I guess that cinder block down there would remain, but then just those screens be replaced and that knee wall would be about 36 inches high going around it. All right. Technical questions. Ed. Um, and this may be for the petitioner, I don't know, but on the note, it says knee wall with vinyl siding. Does that, you said the cinder block was going to remain? I believe. But, so I guess we can ask that. Yeah, there yeah. may be something for the petitioner if they're here, I guess. But I, I'm just trying to figure out what material goes where, when, where it stops, where it starts. Sure. Other technical questions? Well, if he's going to put uh, vinyl siding around on the knee wall, it's not going to match the siding on the house. Well, that's, that's kind of, I guess, the extension of my question is what's going where on the house? Other technical questions or comments? Okay, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Come on up. <laughs> Tell us what you know. First of all, I'd like to apologize for my pictures. I don't have CAD, so that's just hand drawn. Um, to answer your questions, the concrete block is going to be left repaired, skim coated. It will contrast nicely with the color of the vinyl that we picked out. If this is approved, the entire home will be sided in the color that was the siding sample that was on there. So that would go essentially the, the block would be the block. the block will remain. And then you'd have the, the vinyl essentially start at the level of the, the current siding above the knee wall that you see on the left-hand side of that picture? Correct. And then it'll come up to the top of the knee wall and carry through the, the same siding that's on the rest of the house around on that knee wall. Okay. That makes sense. Do we have any other questions for the petitioner as long as she's here? Get her name? Yes, your name and oh, address, please. Pat Komorowski. I own Komorowski Properties. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? Okay, back to the commission. Hey, Robert. He's done it all. I was going to make a motion, but yeah, he's done I'm it all. I'm waiting for Robert. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'll <laughs> make a motion Nothing to approve. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any discussion on the motion? Okay, call the roll. Uh, roll. Aye. It's hot today. Bye, good. Aye. Boy, suck. Aye. Bowen? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Hills? Aye. Poitak? Aye. Motion carried 7 0. Okay, moving on to item number five comprehensive land use plan amendment for a portion of the Lakeshore Municipal Golf Course. Okay, so kind of at the next step in the uh, Oshash Corporation proposed site along Lakeshore Municipal Golf Course. Uh, first step is to change our comprehensive land use map from the existing. Uh, parks and open space recommendation to commercial. Uh, so as you can see outlined in black here is the general um, outline of, of the area that's being uh, considered for Oshkosh Corporation. Uh, that is the proposed area that we're proposing the land use amendment take place to take it from the uh, parks, open space and recreation to commercial. So then following a uh, rezoning could take place for that site. Um, here's kind of the existing comprehensive land use map. I've, Oh, this is the land use map, sorry, existing land use map of what we have out there today for land uses with the golf course, some residential and commercial in the area. 
Here we have the comprehensive land use map. I would say to note on the south. I'm losing it today. Sorry, zoning map where we have the institutional for the golf course, a mixture of SMU and SMU PD along Oshkosh Avenue, and then the existing homes. Now we get to the land use map. <laughs> Um, if you remember, we do have that portion along Oshkosh Avenue that is currently pending the land use uh, designation to commercial that we talked about uh, a couple of meetings back. Council has had first reading on that, and next uh, Tuesday would have its second reading to finalize that comprehensive land use map change. Um, so again, you can see the area that Oshkosh Corporation land use map proposal is. It would be to commercial to match the existing uh, Oshkosh Avenue sites and the proposed Oshkosh Avenue addition. We are recommending approval of the update to the comprehensive land use map. All right, technical questions, Jeff, and then Kathy. Yes, Stephen, is it uh, intended that when we look at the zoning ordinance that we're going to be considering, in our, you know, the, the new zoning ordinance, yep. that, that both those areas would be the same zoning ordinance? Correct. Correct. So what this is doing is just changing the land use to be consistent for those two areas on the land use in the comprehensive correct. plan. Correct, correct, correct. So we're amending the comprehensive plan, okay. We'll okay. amend the comprehensive plan, then we'll come back with a no, zoning zone ordinance change. Okay. Abby. Um, that's the map I want to look at. Um, the yellow is the pending amendment yep. that we've talked about. Correct. And just to the left of that, it's already zoned commercial. It's our, the comp so plan that already calls for commercial. Uh, not zoned, but uh, comp plan. It's yep. both both zoned and comp plan. Okay, okay. So then uh, the whole thing would be consistent. Correct. So basically, um, the entire yellow portion is the proposed change that's going on in front of council right now. That would take commercial all the way through to Mary Jewel Park for the comprehensive plan, and then Oshkosh Corporation site would also be picked up as a commercial. So you'd have uh, just the red through all of that area. Okay. All right. Other technical questions. Seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Okay, back to the commission. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, call the roll, please. Oh, I missed. Yeah. Rob? Aye. Stagert? Aye. Borisak? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Holmes? Aye. I want to set that board up again. Hints? Aye. Boytek? Aye. Motion carried 7 0. All right, planning director's report, sir. All right, let's see here. Oh, all right, now I'm on. Um, land use amendment south of 91. It went to the council last week. It's been kicked back to us uh, for further review. Uh, what I can see is we're gonna, we're, we'll come back. We're going to have another meeting, I think, sometime in January with, uh, with the Industrial Development Committee talk about some of the concerns that were raised um, and we're, we'll go back uh, with another recommendation to the council sometime next January or February. What's, Darren, what's going to be different? I, I watched that meeting and I was confused as to what they were expecting us to do. I think there was, uh, I, I think I have to do a better job of explaining some of the implications of, of the land use actions that we are proposing. Um, so I think well, I know they wanted us to look at this a little bit more holistically as far as the growth of Oshkosh. I think that was my takeaway, and they weren't sure if this was look doing that, which I thought it did based off all the discussions that we had for however many meetings we talked about that area. I think some were, some, there was some concern that that opens that whole area up for residential, and that's not our intention to open that whole whole area up for residential. That's not the case. The action that they were requ that we were requesting, there was also I think some people thought that we were actually moving forward with the residential development. We weren't. We're just setting the land use in place. Now, the land use plan will set up the next thing, which would be the annex potential annex attachment. It's, it's in a town attachment with the zoning that would potentially allow that through conditional use and plan development. One of the things that, that the takeaway from the meeting and I know we talked about it here in the Planning Commission was the fact that we need to push some residential maybe even uh, multi-housing residential 
a little for further this. out. Not everybody wants to live. We've had this discussion Correct. before. Not everybody wants to live inside the town. They may right. want to live on the outskirts of town. This developer that has that proposal wants to develop on the outside of town near an industrial park. That's what they do. Um, and I'm not sure how much the Common Council, I guess, understood what we were thinking about from that. Well, I think there's also some of that, and there, then there's a, the the other concern, the, the the sprawl concern, which is out there. We yeah. we sprawling out. So I mean, that's that actually happens when we. I mean, right now we have to have a land use map in place. The land use map, the land use map in place that we have is going to facilitate additional <coughs> development in that area. If I know we, they were they were concerned. I mean, I heard the concern about you know go transit and things of well, that the, nature. Well, go transit, yeah, parks you know, and all but that. But again. People that are moving out there aren't necessarily looking for bus lines. I mean, they have cars. I mean, we we, we got that from mm -hmm. uh, the last gentleman that, that was here that proposed, you know, that we approved the apartments out further Unruffle. because he's even further out on Jackson Street. I'm not even sure if the Go Transit goes out that That's far Creek. for those apartments. A, yeah, out to cold. Um, so not everything needs to have bus. I, I get their point. I mean, I understand yeah. their point, but on the same token. You develop the area, and then you kind of figure out how to, mm -hmm. the transportation goes out there. You don't put the transportation out there first, and then. Well, I mean, it's whether we have the capacity to do that as well. Do we have the capacity right. to move out there? I, I, at the end of the day, I, you know, we have. I had some good maps that we proposed that I didn't show last time. I think that really broke it down and showed some of the options right. that are out there. We'll have that meeting again. We'll, we'll talk about it. At the end of the day, you know. You know, we'll present a couple other options. And status quo is always the option. Status quo just simply means it's going to be industrial, not change at all. And who knows how long you're going to have it sitting. Well, that I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see where they, they really got the, you know, the, the growth things that we've been talking about. You know, how much residential land, well, we have, how much industrial land we had, except, you know, so forth and so on. To sit there and say, okay, we need to leave that as a status mm -hmm. quo when we already have more industrial land. Than, than we know what to do with for X amount of years. And I mean, we did present that. I mean, that was all included in our, in our packet. We didn't have we didn't have a, a special, uh, you know, we we haven't had that discussions with the council like we had with you on the, on that on that matter. So you know, this might help a little bit. Um, we'll we'll clarify some of the information. If that was a concern, we'll continue to clarify that and clarify that and improve on that information that's out there. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The property, I'm going to roughly to the west on 91, south of 91. Mm -hmm. uh, there had been some discussion about how developable much of that property Correct. is. Is it possible when you um, come before <clears throat> us? Is I know we don't have a wetland delineation, but can we have? If we have that map, a, some kind of a map that yep. that gives us the indication of really what is the what we yep. think is developable and what is not developable. We have a layer in our GIS that shows kind of the, what 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 kind of map is that, Jeff? Indicator it, was a, it was an indicator soils map. We have that. It's mapped out. We'll we'll include that as well in, in that in that coming coming forward. Um, so we do have that. You're right. That that land to the west, as of right now, is difficult to develop. There's a lot of hydric soils there that we're seeing. Um, so I think that might be an issue going forward, but you never know changes in state law, like we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, things can always change, and you can start, you know, filling things and doing stuff. Like can do best with what we have. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll, as soon as we know a schedule, uh, we'll have some type of, we'll have a meeting, we'll have another workshop on it, and hopefully we'll get something uh, January, February time frame. There's a lot going on, so we got to fit it in there. Uh, the new state legislation, I meant to have a handout on this. I'll have it the next time. The long and short of it is there was a bill that was being called the Homeowner's Bill of Rights. And what, yeah. was, what, was, buried, what was buried in the Homeowner's Bill, it's never, it's never Homeowner's Bill of Rights. Uh, what, it, what, it, what it was, uh, it, you know, what basically what they, what they did was it was another attack on local zoning and what we can and can't do. And, and this particular one builds off of some actions in previous years where it affects non-conforming structures. The whole intent with zoning and non-conforming structures is that non-conformities will go away over time. Uh, state law changed a couple years ago where they said, well, 
if an act of God takes it out, if uh, something else, if fire, wind, all that, if it takes it out, well, you can rebuild it on, on the footprint. And we fought that at the time because we, we don't think it's good planning. Uh, and it, we think it benefits, you know, billboards and things like that, and all those type of all those type of signs. Or sometimes we don't like them in some places. Uh, and then the latest bill, uh, one of the impacts was if you got a non-conforming structure, you can just take it down of your own of your own will and rebuild it. That has some serious implications from a planning standpoint and from you know neighborhood cohesion and all these and all these impacts that if you've got this structure that's too close to the road that's you know sitting right on a lot line blah 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 you can just now it has it used to have to fall down used to have to burn down which we didn't like uh, now you just take it down and rebuild it in place so I think that from our from our standpoint that's a significant concern there's a couple other things in that bill. Um, that we didn't like, and I'll, I'll, I'll report that out next time. I just, with everything else. With so that, you'll get us a handout? Yep, I'll get, it, I'll get you a handout on that. Any other business here today before we adjourn and go to workshop? Sure, did that pass? That passed, uh, I think, in uh, Governor's sign. It passed by the Assembly by a voice vote and then Senate by a vote. So. God. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, adjourn. We're going to workshop. All right.